Welcome to the channel. Well, today we're doing part two of our handheld latency testing. And you might notice the and corrections down here at the bottom. So before we get started, let me introduce my iPhone 12. And if you look here, this is the slow-mo mode for video recording, which is what I'm using to record these handhelds for testing. And you notice here 720p, 240 frames per second resolution, which is what I'm recording the videos at. And when I did the initial round of latency testing, I did not have this handy, the old lightning cable, because basically I usually have it in the car to hook my, <laughs> hook my phone up for CarPlay. But so I transferred the videos from the phone to my computer wirelessly. You know, no big deal, right? Well, what I found out after looking at the data again and looking at some of the, uh, some of the commentary on Reddit, I looked at the videos again with a little bit closer eye, and I found out that apparently exporting the videos from the iPhone to the computer wirelessly, the iPhone helpfully decides to re-encode them. I don't know why it does this. You know, why would I want to re-encode re my 240 frame per second videos? But the net effect is importing them wireless, wirelessly to the computer drop the frame rate to 120 frames per second effectively. So what that means is the actual calculated numbers in the previous video have the wrong denominator. Thank you, Apple. What I did find out was I could get the unaltered videos by using a direct cable connection. So I did a few things. I transferred all the videos over again and reloaded them, counted frames again. So I've redone all the data from the last video. And I've recorded some new data, and I've actually uh, re-recorded some of the old data as well with a stopwatch behind the videos. So as you can see here, so that I can make sure that Apple is not doing any funny business with the videos. And I verified that I am now actually getting the correct 240 frames per second. So... I've basically redone the test from the last video, and if you want to see basically how the tests are done, the last video is fine. It shows you basically what goes on. It's just that the final numbers on the last slide were divided by, for that, for the old exported videos wirelessly, I should have divided by 120 instead of 240. But I've corrected all that for this video, so what we will do is we will go ahead and take a look at the uh, new and revised data for all these handhelds. So as a reminder, here are our parameters for this test. We have videos filmed with the iPhone 12 Pro at 720p, 240 frames per second. This time, the file was copied directly to the PC via the cable so that Apple did not helpfully re-encode the videos and screw up the frame rate. So this time we have actual true 240 frame per second video. We used on the Android devices, we used Gamepad Tester from the App Store as our way to demonstrate when the handheld responds. And you might notice I said on Android devices because we don't have all Androids this time. So frames counted from full button travel, in other words, we let the button go all the way to the bottom, and we verified that it stayed down there. It wasn't moving any further. And we went back to the first frame where the button had actually hit bottom. I think that's probably the fairest way to account for the fact that some of these buttons are taller than others. And from just playing around with these devices, the button press actually seems to be registered at the bottom of the tap anyway, for the most part. So I think that's about as accurate as we're going to be able to get with a test like this. So we counted from that frame to when we could start to see the indicator light up in the gamepad tester app. Now, of course, we have two Linux devices that we've added to the pile here. So there is some new stuff in this video, not just a correction of the old one. For the, 
Ann Burnick here, the RG28XX, and we use the gamepad test function of the settings menu. Same thing with the MiU Mini Plus. These are both using stock firmware, so no, uh, no uh, custom firmware here, just stock as, as shipped when I got the devices. So these two use the built-in testing facility in the settings menus. Now, this may mean that these numbers aren't directly comparable to the Android numbers, just for the simple reason that we're using a different way to test it, because, well, we don't have the GamePad tester Android app on the Linux devices here. But another thing could be that we would expect, if we get less latency on the Linux devices, that maybe there's less going on in the background of one of these you know, custom Linux OS handhold handhelds there's less going on in the background so you don't have to worry about things getting in the way of processing the button press so just a uh, quick rundown of the test parameters now let's get to the actual data so i've put these more or less in alphabetical order first up we have the ambernic rg28xx again with stock firmware and measuring this device here are the uh, frame counts for those who are interested in checking the math. This time, we actually do have a 240 frame per second video, so I'm pretty confident in these numbers here. As you can see, we're getting uh, average response times around 48 milliseconds for this device, which is... It's, it seems like it's not lower than the last ones, but you'll, you'll see when we look at the uh, revised data that, yeah, this one is actually pretty responsive. The second device up is the Ambernic RG405M. Now, with the revised data here, you can see that the uh, latency here, the time for a button response is about 75 milliseconds on average. So, at least right off the bat, it seems like the Android devices are a little less responsive than the Linux ones, which is what we might actually expect. The RG556 clocks in at 92 millisecond response time. And I do have one there that was 100 and one that was 83. So there's going to be there's some variation in this data. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly when the button press was actually registered. I try to do what I can here, but there's limitations of actually seeing when the button goes down. So we get some noise in the data. But average response time here is 92 milliseconds, which is not as good as your RG405M. But then again, this device can run more stuff that the RG405M can't. Getting out of the Ambernic devices for a bit, the MiU Mini Plus, another Linux handheld. Again, this was with the testing facility and settings because we don't have a real gamepad tester app for this. But from button press to response, as you can see, we're getting around 46 milliseconds, which is comparable to the other Ambernic Linux device. I'll have a chart at the end that shows all of these together. But again, here's the raw data if you want to if you want to uh, check my work. You know, basically what we're doing is we're taking the frames, dividing it by the frames per second, and converting it to milliseconds. This time, the frames per second should be correct. Moving on, we have the Odin 2 Mini which is the first of the two Odins that are in this testing pool. And you can see the Odin 2 Mini with the revised data here. Again, it looks kind of like the Ambernic RG556. We're getting 91 milliseconds for average response time. <clears throat> and you might wonder, well, the last time we tested these, yeah, the division was wrong at the end because of the way the uh, iPhone screwed the video up. But you might wonder, hey, was the difference between the Odin 2 Mini and the Odin 2 real? So, I actually reshot these videos and counted them again, just to make sure. But we can see that the Odin 2 Pro, which is our next handheld, the original Odin 
Odin 2 models, you can see that the response time was noticeably slower. So the difference between the Mini and the Pro is backed up by the revised data. So we saw the difference in the original set of data, but we also have, you know, the only thing that was wrong with the original set of data was because of the export, I divided by the wrong number. So thank you, Apple. But we can still see that the Odin 2, the original, is noticeably slower at giving a response than the Mini is. And one hypothesis I've heard about that is, well, it's a different screen. Maybe so. Up next, we have the Razer Edge. And due to some discussions in, in Reddit on the, on the topic that I made for this last vid, the, for the first video, the Razer Edge, of course, you can run at a higher refresh rate on the screen. So what we thought, what I thought I would do is run at two different refresh rates. So here is the data for the screen set at 60 hertz. As you can see, the uh, Razer is snappier than a lot of the other Android handhelds I've tested so far. And again, you'll see this when you see the, see the page with all the data at the same time. But the Razer Edge is a bit more responsive than either of the Odin's or the Android devices that we've tested. Well, the uh, Android ones anyway. So 82 milliseconds for the 60 hertz refresh rate. Now, the question, of course, is does that change when we put the Razer into a higher refresh rate? And the answer to that is yes. The Razer Edge is way more responsive at 144 hertz. As you can see here, the time from button press to response drops to 37 milliseconds. So if you're doing retro gaming on the Razer Edge, you might consider setting that refresh rate to a higher value. Lose some of that lag time. And spoiler alert, this is actually the lowest value out of all of the tests that are going to be in this video. <laughs> so last, but certainly not least, in terms of the milliseconds that it takes to register a button press, we have the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I don't have a Retroid Pocket 4 or 4 Plus to test. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus has the same screen, though, so if the idea is that the screen is contributing to the latency that we observe, well, we might expect the Retroid Pocket 4 to be about the same. So on average, I got about 98 milliseconds. So not quite as responsive maybe as the uh, Ambernic devices, but it's in line with a lot of the Android stuff with the exception of the Razer Edge with the high refresh rate mode. So here is a table of all of our data together. I've ranked it from fastest response to slowest. You can see that the Razer Edge, 100, the 144 hertz refresh rate, basically just stomps all over everybody in terms of response, beating out the Linux handhelds, beating out all of the other Androids tested. And again, this is the only device I have that has a higher refresh rate that I can run this test on. So. Not surprisingly, I guess, the high refresh rate kind of helps if you're looking for reducing some of that lag time. You might notice also the Linux devices tend to be more responsive on average, and the Android devices tend to be a little less responsive. Again, maybe that's just due to Android devices having more to do. They're not quite as focused on getting those buttons pressed as our Linux handhelds up here. So if you're looking at you know older retro games, then maybe you get a better experience on some of the cheaper Linux devices, as long as the device can actually run what you want to run, though. The problem with a lot of these Linux devices is if you want PlayStation 2, for example, you're just SOL because they can't do it. And I was curious, I put the Android version over here to see if Android version tended to make any difference, but uh, I don't really see any kind of correlation here. The Retroid Pocket 3 is running an older Android operating system. Some of the slower devices are running Android 13. You know, maybe there's something to that. Maybe there's a little bit more latency in Android 13 than 12 or 11. 
But I think the biggest thing that had an influence on the response time was the screen refresh rate. So that high refresh rate mode, that 144 hertz mode in the Razor Edge, will give you a good bit faster response time. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video here. If you have any speculations about, you know, what's, what's going on with these handhelds, what's going on with the latency here, then feel free to leave it in the comments. And hope you like the video. And if you want to see more handheld-related and gaming content, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time, probably with some gameplay tests.